This video is going to introduce radical expressions and functions. So we're going to start off with this. Let's say you have the square root of something equals something else. So this square or this symbol right here means the square root. And what the square root is means there is a value of b. If it were squared, it would be a on the inside. First off, your a has to be positive meaning that inside the square root, you have to have a positive number. And if you think about that, there's something of b, if it were two, two squared would be four, four would be what would be inside the square root. But if it were negative two times negative two, that's also positive four. So the only way you can get, um, the only kind of number you can get inside your square root is a positive number for now. So let's say I have here 4 squared equals 16. Then what that means is the square root of 16 would be 4. All right, so then what would be the square root of 100? What squared is 100? That would be 10. What about negative square root of 81? Well, the negative is on the outside of the square root, so that is okay. So we're just going to try and figure out what the square root of 81 is. What squared is 81? That would be 9. So our final answer here would be negative 9. Let's look at a couple more of those. Let's say I have the square root of 25 minus the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 25, well, 25 is 5 times 5, so the square root of 25 is 5. And we already found earlier the square root of 16 is 4. So this answer would be 5 minus 4 is 1. Now, if I looked at that a different way and I had the square root of 25 minus 16, the order of operations with square roots are part of the parentheses well, actually, technically, they're part of the exponents because this we'll learn later that the square root means there's a specific exponent that goes with it. So what you need to do first is do the subtraction. 25 minus 16 is 9, and the square root of 9 would be 3. All right, now that we've kind of got a grasp of what square root means, we're going to take a look at square root functions. So a square root function would be something where you would have an f of x equals the square root of something. In this case, let's just say x. Okay, some things about the square root function are that you can never have the inside of your square root be negative. The inside of your square root has to be positive. Okay, the next thing is that we can evaluate the square roots by just plugging in values. So if I had f of 16, that would be plugging 16 in for x here. And what is the square root of 16? That would be 4. We can have a little bit harder functions. Let's say I have, all right here, f of x equals the square root of 5x minus 6. And we want to find f of 2. We would just plug 2 in for x, 5 times 2 minus 6. So that would be the square root of 10 minus 6, which would be 4. So that would be 2. What if I wanted to find f of negative 2? I would plug 2 in, so 5 times negative 2 minus 6, that gives us negative 16. Now, that's a problem because we cannot have a negative inside our square root. So, at f of negative 2, our square root function is undefined. Now that leads us into our next thing, which is the domain of functions.
So let's say I have the function f of x equals the square root of x. What we know is the inside of the square root must not be negative. So that means that the inside x, this x must be greater than or equal to zero. If we sketch that on a number line, there's my zero, you have to be greater than or equal to zero. So the domain of the square root function is that you can go from zero to infinity. And we're gonna write this in interval notation because an interval is what describes the domain the best. All right, let's look at another one. Let's say I have f of x equals the square root of 3x plus 12. So we know that the inside of our square root, the 3x plus 12, must be greater than or equal to 0. So if we go solve that, we get 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12, and then divide both sides by 3, and we get x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So on a number line, here's my negative 4, and we are all the values greater than or equal to negative 4. So that means that my domain here will be negative 4 to infinity. All right, let's take a look at one more domain problem because something weird can happen. Let's say I have the square root of 6 minus 2x. So we know that 6 minus 2x must be greater than or equal to 0. If I subtract the 6 over, I get negative 2x can be greater than or equal to negative 6. And divide both sides by negative 2, and we get to flip the sign, because we are dividing by a negative. So then we end up with x is less than or equal to 3. So because we had to divide by a negative, the sign got flipped. So now instead of greater than, we're going to go the other direction. So my domain is from negative infinity, make sure you do a parenthesis, to 3. And then because we can be equal to 3, we'll do a bracket. So there is our domain. So if you do have to divide by a negative, do make sure you flip the sign. So that is the domain of square root functions. Any even root has to have a domain where the inside of your has the inside has to be positive. When we're taking the square root of something squared, we want to simplify it. The simplification of the square root of something squared is always the absolute value of a, meaning what this means is that the square root of something squared is always the positive of itself. So let's write the rule here. If I have the square root of a squared, that will always equal the absolute value of a. So some examples here, if I have six squared, the square root of 6 squared is 6. I like to think of it as the square root and the squared canceling each other out. It's like adding and then subtracting. The only difference with that is that if I have negative 6 squared, negative 6 squared is 36, and then the square root of 36 is 6. So that means we really had the absolute value of negative 6 in that case. Now, if you have a variable, this is where it gets tricky. If I have a variable, so like x plus 5 squared, the square root and the square do cancel each other out. So the answer should be x plus 5. However, because we always, it always is the positive, the final answer would be the ac absolute value of x plus 5. Okay, let's look at one more of these, because this one looks pretty tricky to simplify. But if I can take that inside and rewrite that as x plus 6 squared, then 
The absolute value and the square do cancel out. Sorry, not the absolute value. The square root and the square do cancel out, and we're left with the absolute value of x plus 6. So whenever you take the square root of something squared, make sure that you have an absolute value of that. If it's a constant, you can just take the absolute value of negative 6 and that's 6, or absolute value of negative 3 is 3. But if you're left with a variable, your final answer will still contain the absolute values. Now we don't only just have square roots, we have higher powered roots. So let's take a look at the next one, which is a cube root. So let's say I have the cube root, the cube root of A. Let's say that equals B. What that cube root is saying is it's like a square root symbol, but there's a 3. And it means that there's a number B where if I were to cube it, it would equal A. So for example, if I had the cube of 8, is there a number multiplied by itself three times that gives you 8? Yes, that would be 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now the next one, let's take a look at the cube root of 27. That would be 3 times 3 times 3. The cube root of 64 would be 4, because it's 4 times 4 times 4. Now here's one to kind of think about. What if I had the cube root of negative 8? That actually, if I were to take negative 2 and cube it, we end up with negative 8. So cube roots can have negatives inside them. Any odd root can have a negative. Any even root has to be positive. And the reason is because evens, an even amount of negatives is always positive. But an odd amount of negatives will give us a negative number. So if I wanted to take the cube root of negative 125, that would give us negative 5. The cube root of 216 would give us positive 6. The cube root of negative 1000 would give us negative 10. So the cube root can be positive or negative on the inside. So I want you to make sure you know that. And you're looking for a number that you're multiplying by itself three times to get to the inside of the cube root. Now remember when you were simplifying the square root, and I have the square root of x squared, that, absolute, that ends up being the absolute value of x. But if I have the cube root of something, it actually just ends up being positive x, or any x. It doesn't have to be the absolute value. So if you're simplifying the cube root, let's say I have the cube root of negative 64, and we want to simplify that out. 64 is 4 times 4 times 4, but I have a negative, so it can be negative 4. Let's say I have the cube root of 8 cubed, and I want to simplify that. That ends up being 8. If I have the cube root of negative 5 cubed, that ends up giving us negative 5. If we have the cube root of 8 x cubed, that ends up being 2x. Now this pattern occurs for all even and odd roots, so let's try and simplify some higher powered roots. All right, so if I have the fourth root of 81, we're looking for a number multiplied by itself four, four times to get to 81. So that would be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 1 more 3 is 81. So now if I have a negative on the outside, the fourth root of 81 is 3, but the negative on the outside is OK. If I have a negative on the inside, you need to look and see is this an even root or an odd root? Since it is even, you cannot have a negative, so it is undefined. 
Okay. Now the fifth root of 32, that would give us two, let's try two. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times one more two, that's a fifth two, is 32, so that gives us two. So then the fifth root of negative 32, we check to make sure it's an odd root, and since it's odd, my answer would be negative two. All right, so if your uh, root that you're trying to simplify involves a variable, so it becomes an expression, if the radical, sorry, if the root is an even, make sure that you do have an absolute value. So if I take the fourth root of x to the fourth, Think of the fourth root and the four canceling, but since it's an even power, we have to add on an absolute value. But if it's an odd, the fifth root of x to the fifth do cancel and that just ends up being x. So that means if I have the cube root of x plus four to the third, that ends up just being x plus four because it's an odd root. But if I have an even root, the fourth root of x minus seven to the fourth, that's the absolute value of x minus seven. So if I have the 10th root of x plus three to the 10th, that is an even root, so that would be the absolute value of x plus three. So that is how you would simplify expressions, very basic expressions, knowing the power and the root. So just one more quick thing I wanted to add in this vid video is just what a radical expression, the parts of the radical expression. So I have here the nth root of a. The sign right here is the radical. The inside of the square root we call the radicand. And the n here, the root that we're taking a look at, that is called the index. So whatever the index number is. We also consider it whatever the root is. So that is it for 7.1 radical expressions and functions.